Hi, my name is Gwen Ottinger, and I'm a professor at Drexel University. I got my PhD from Cal Berkeley, and I've been interested in fence line monitoring ever since I was a graduate student in the early 2000s. The fence line at Phillips 66 was relatively new at the time, and it was the only one of its kind. And I've always wondered what we could learn about chronic exposures from refineries from all that long-term data. I've gotten even more interested in that question since the EPA and air districts in California started requiring fence line monitoring. What I've discovered though, is that you can't learn anything from the data unless you can get your hands on it. And right now companies and regulatory agencies make it extremely hard to download data so you can analyze it. That's where Refinery AirWatch comes from. Our first goal is to make fence line air monitoring data available for people to download so that you can crunch the numbers however you want and ask whatever kinds of questions you want. Our second goal is to push past the idea that fence line monitoring is just about pe keeping people safe in an emergency. Real-time monitoring is really important for that, of course, but refinery pollution is a chronic nationwide problem. And if we really want to know the scope of the problem, we need to look at the available data over time and across different sites. So you'll see on our site some metrics that let you compare fence line pollution levels across the country. And we're working to develop other analyses that give us insight into long-term effects. Finally, we wanted to show the monitoring that's not being done and the data that are being kept away from the public. So you'll see that on our site too. We hope that by making these gaps visible, we can help pressure regulators into filling them. Okay, so uh, Refinery AirWatch runs off a database that includes three data sets. The first one is the data from the benzene sampling that all refineries around the country are required to do on their perimeters. These benzene samples are two week averages and companies report them to the EPA once every quarter. Now people criticize this program and rightly so because it doesn't tell you much of anything about flaring or accidental releases that could endanger a community. But we still think it's useful data for understanding refinery pollution as a chronic nationwide problem. The second data set is the continuous monitoring required of all California refineries by AB 1647. These data get posted on websites more or less right away, so they're potentially more useful in the case of an emergency. But they could also have something to tell us about the pollution coming from refineries day in and day out. The problem is that you can't download these data from the websites and the companies running the monitors don't give us a way to tap into the data on the back end. So our data sets are config our, our databases are configured to handle this data, but they don't include it just yet. This is one of those places where for now, all we can do is show what's available, but is being withheld from the public. Now the final data set that we do have in our databases is for just one refinery, the Valero refinery in Benicia, California. Now these are continuous data from a community managed monitoring program. And through a collaboration with the folks in Benicia, we are able to make the, the data available for download and analysis. Now we think this should be an example for refinery run fence line monitoring programs on how they should be making data available to the public. And I think uh, someone from that program will talk a little more about it, um, about the community run nature of it uh, next. Um, anyway, so thank you very much for being here. I'm sorry I can't attend tonight in real time, but I hope that you will get in touch with your feedback. Uh, we would very much value the opportunity to collaborate with you. Thanks. Okay. So I wanted to kind of give you a sense of kind of what we're going to be doing at, at today's uh, webinar um, and kind of, uh, yeah, give you get a sense of a, a roadmap of, of what this, uh, of this webinar will, will be like um, and then what you'll get, what you're going to get out of this. Um, so there's going to be kind of be two parts. Uh, first, we're going to just do a site tour to kind of get a sense of what we have and kind of the sort of Things that we can you can do when you, when you just go to the site um, without actually need to you know look at data or any anything like that just like look at what what we have available 
Um, but then also I'm going to actually try to download some data and visualize it for you so you can kind of see uh, the kinds of things that you can actually start to, to look into. Um, and then um, I've also, yeah, so um, let's just start with kind of get, I want to give you a sense of what we have on Refinery Airwatch before we go into the site. So um, as Aaron posted, um, you can go to our website at refineryairwatch.org. And um, as uh, Gwen mentioned and, and Constance, this is a national database. Um, and the purpose of Refinery Airwatch is to, if you're interested in a refinery, we want to give you as much data as we know about this refinery. And so what we get um, is um, because we know that refineries have to report their average benzene concentrations, as Gwen mentioned, uh, we know uh, we have that data. We can actually make that available for you. We can use statistics to actually compare and contrast across um, across the United States, um, you know, how better or worse refineries are. Um, and so we allow you to compare by refinery, by company, and by state. So we do some aggregation there. Um, and then um, we want to kind of make it clear, uh, you know, we have some really interesting statistics that I would like to show you. Um, one is called on unhealthy weeks. So what we did was we said, okay, when we know that, you know, all benzene is bad, we know benzene is, is bad no matter how much uh, is in the air. But when it's at three micrograms per deciliter um, or per meter cubed, um, that it's essentially unhealthy, very unhealthy. It's um, kind of what we consider like the minimum or, or the minimum before. And so what we said was, um, if if that has exceeded for, for those two week, for like every two week period that we're getting samples, um, if it has exceeded that, then we'll count that as unhealthy week. So we can actually get a sense of how unhealthy the air is um, you know, on a week by week, so you we can actually use that to compare as well. And then finally, um, we also wanted to show you what chemicals are even being measured there, as, as far as we know. Obviously, everything here is um, based on all the best knowledge that we have. And you can really kind of see the disparity across the board um, in multiple ways. One, um, maybe they only um, maybe they're only required to measure one type of chemical, benzene, by the government. Of federal government, so you only get you only get to see that that kind of data, or you know California's uh, Californians actually get high, more regulated, um, so they're actually a, a set of chemicals that are measured, so you can get to see which chemicals are are being measured at this at this refinery and click on and see live monitoring sites uh, for each of those refineries. But the caveat, and and they you know this is the unfortunate caveat is that that data may not necessarily be accessible for us to download it. They have websites that make it really easy to see that, but to download it and actually use it to make it interesting is, is actually quite difficult. So, um, so you can actually kind of see those kind of disparities. Um, and then finally, the most important thing is downloading the data and you can actually start to um, make graphs and do analyses. And you know, this is kind of more towards the kind of data scientists and the activists and the, you know, you really want to be able to produce a report that you can give to your city council about, hey, you know, this is a problem. You know, why, why is there a disparity here? Why is there, um, why is this chemical showing up um, and spiking, et cetera? So, you know, so th those are kind of the, the main ideas. Um, and so we can kind of get a sense of all these, these different things. And so now I want to kind of deep dive into some of the features. Um, so um, firstly, we're talking about comparisons because we want to be able to compare apples to apples. So um, the e so again, each refiner is reporting um, average benzene concentrations um, based on a set of sampling um, a sampling sites. So we can actually start to ask some questions, answer some questions like which companies run the worst refineries <laughs> or the most refineries? Who, 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 owns, who owns these companies? Uh, who owns these refineries? Um, secondly, which states are allowing refineries to have higher benzene concentrations? And you know, no surprise, actually California is probably one of the best and the, Texas is the worst. <laughs> um, um, and then um, of course, which states um, require the most chemicals to be measured at all? Um, and so then you can actually see the distribution of chemicals that are measured. Um, but it, whether or not they're actually accessible, you'll, you'll actually see um, what, what we have there. 
on the download side, um, we can we were uh, you can download the two week benzene sample. So again, these are reported um, quarterly um, um, to the EPA for a two week sampling period. So that's what you'll see in the data. You'll see like two weeks, um, a two week spread kind of and one number, which is just the average benzene concentration at a specific sampling location. Um, this data is available um, across um, all the refineries. Um, right now, we only have up to like 2021. I um, that's because it takes a lot of energy to actually like get all of those like they're like unfiltered data. It's like very raw, like they're Excel sheets that we have to actually um, ingest in um, very manually. It's a manual process. So we're we can we might not have like the most up to date, but um, you know we're we're, we're up to, keeping up to date as, as quickly as we can. Um, and then they're kind of I think what Gwen said is they're reported seventy five days after the quarter. So the newest set of data will be available soon, but yeah, we're a little bit behind, but we have up to 2021, which is, which is, uh, which is good. Um, and then finally, we have continuous monitoring data available. Um, right now, we only have one, um, um, available, one set of data available from BCAMP, um, which was mentioned earlier. Um, BCAMP, and we, we're, we're par we partner with them, we work with them really closely, um, and you know, they, they really made sure that we can access the data. They provide an open API. Anyone can actually uh, get that data um, directly if they wanted to. And it's such an incredible uh, way to radically give people access because um, otherwise, as you'll see, all these other refineries, they just say, hey, we did this. We, we have this, this website. You can look at the data, but we can't download it. They don't even provide any way to do it. So we're really appreciative that they, that they made that data available for us to, for you to download. Um, there are 11 chemicals that they um, that they uh, measure and make available for us, um, and so we'll actually be downloading that data and doing a little bit of a little bit of analysis on it. Okay. Um, all right. So I kind of give you a sense of what's there. Let's jump right in. So let's go to this. So everyone can can see this the site. Yeah. Okay. So welcome to Refinery Airwatch. Um, so you're presented with. At the very uh, the home page is a map view and a list view. Um, so the map view kind of gives you a sense of where are these refineries located. And unfortunate um, byproduct of the fact that we center this map on here, we actually have uh, two refineries: one in Alaska, one in Honolulu, and one in Puerto Rico. So don't don't, don't forget about them if you're if you're interested in, in seeing data from them. Um, of course, we're you know this this uh, webinar is kind of focused in is the Bay Area. Um, you'll notice I did get a little pop up, but notice that there we also have um, some of the uh, Los Angeles, Southern California. I did I did notice that uh, there are some folks from Los Angeles, so we have some stuff there. Um, and as you know, there are um, these main refineries in the Bay Area, the Chevron Richmond Refinery. Um, it here you get a little pop up um, that kind of tells you like what what kind of data we have there. So, um, and then um, of course, uh, Philip 66, uh, which, you know, again, name keeps changing, uh, Valero Benicia. Um, then we have the Shell Martinez and the Tesoro Martinez uh, refinery. So you can actually click on the data to go to their specific data set sites. Um, and then from a list view, I just wanted to show off, um, here are all the refiners that we have, where they're located, and you can even search. So, you know, you wanna get directly to Benicia, you know, you can you can just search by by city. So let's let's actually take a look. So um, let's jump in here and um, take a look at what happens when I click uh, get available data. So after a quick load, um, here are the kind of stuff that you get. So where it's located, a quick map. Um, these are the sampling locations, um, and then just a quick overview. So um, we it's told that there is one pollutant measured every two weeks. That's benzene, and eleven that are continue that are continuous. Uh, it tells us that uh, 11 are accessible and but there are 31 that aren't and that's just due to um, you know there's just many chemicals out there. Um, so and then we also have um, uh, links to actually go see the live monitoring sites. So um, we, one of them will take you to sorry the B camp the first one and the second one will take you to um, this is the 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 one that's um, presented by Valero. So this is what they're, what's required of them. So um, those that show, show you kind of um, those, those data. 
scroll down a little bit, um, we can get actually get a sense of which chemicals are available. So these are the two weak benzene sampling uh, that I mentioned and the continuous one. And select your dates, download types. Um, we're going we're gonna to go over this because I'm going to download some data and show you, show you more. Um, and then some comparisons. So um, what this means is uh, apparently, and this is um, uh, interesting, we, we kind of do a, a ranking based on average benzene concentration. That is the 97th worst. So actually, there's 97 or 96 refineries that are even worse than, um, than this, this one. Um, the highest benzene concentrations that we saw were 10 micrograms per deciliter. And this is the unhealthy weeks um, statistics that I mentioned. That eight weeks during the past year that we measured or we saw that there were um, that the benzene concentration was higher than three micrograms per, per meters cubed. Um, and so that kind of gives you a sense of just, yeah, bad, those are bad weeks. Nice efficacies that kind of go into a little bit more detail. Uh, and then let's say we wanted to, okay, we don't want to download any data. I just want to kind of get a sense of where, where this refinery is compared to others. So we click this, compare this refinery. And here you get to the rankings and comparison page. You can get to it by also going to this, um, this tab here. Um, here you can actually compare and contrast refineries uh, based on different aggregations. So what I mean is um, here you'll notice that, you know, the Valero Venetian one is highlighted. Um, and there are, as I mentioned, 96 other worse refineries. I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna, gonna do yeah. And um, of course you'll notice the, the kind of states that these are located, these are just located in Texas and Tennessee and Louisiana. Um, you know, I think they really need to work on the regulations there. And uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna speak to the politics of, <laughs> of how that, why, why that is, but um, we can appreciate um, that the California refineries are towards the bottom. Um, and then also um, what we could do is we can start to look, look at how they, um, how they compare. Um, by the way, you, if you just wanna find a refinery quickly and you just wanna alphabetize, you can click on these little buttons to kind of quickly um, sort. Um, and of course you wanna know what, here the rankings are based on the, the highest to lowest of this. So anyway, Going to the second tab, we can compare by corporation. So here they're alphabetized uh, by default. But what we can do is we can decide, okay, who we can start to ask, ask these questions like what, which, which companies tend to produce the most unhealthy weeks? So, you know, first we're gonna sort down. So now we know that this company called Total Energies um, produced the worst, they only have one called Total Refinery. And they for 52 weeks of the others, there's all every for every week this year, they somehow produced benzene concentrations higher than three micrograms. Um, and then uh, as, as you know, when you click on these, you can kind of get you, you can open up uh, and see what, what those refineries are. Um, and then of course, um, apparently De Delta Airlines runs a refinery. Who knew? Um, BP, we know had that big oil spill. Um, and of course, uh, Philip 66 has so many, so many refineries, um, and some of them better, some worse. Um, and then of course, um, the other question I might wanna ask is like, you know, given our rankings, um, which companies produce the, the worst refineries? So what we did was given the refinery ranking, we said, which one, in, who, how many uh, of, of these um, refineries, um, how many of them, uh, are in the top 20 and then who who owns those so valera owns four of the top worst the worst refineries um according to you know our, our rankings um and so you can kind of see that um you know valera runs also many many refineries um and so on and so forth and then finally you might just want to know like who runs the most refineries so philip 66 does um you know next is marathon and, third. and next Valero. Can you and slow down just a little bit? Of course, <laughs> of course. Yes, of course. Oopsies. Um, okay, I'll slow down. <laughs> I do talk pretty fast. Thank you for the reminder. Um, as I mentioned, um, Philip 66 uh, runs the most refineries, uh, Marathon second, and Valero third. And here I am just clicking there. 
Uh, and then finally, um, this is kind of more interesting in a political question is which states run the worst refineries? Um, so again, we're going to um, start by looking at who, which state contains the most top worst, 20 worst refineries. Uh, lo and behold, uh, the answer is Texas. And then we further, we further sorted them by rank. And we saw total refinery is the worst. Um, and, uh, you know, all of these companies, all of these refineries run with really high benzene concentrations. Um, and then, you know, we you can kind of see that there are actually many of them too. You know, there are 28 total refineries. So they have the most refineries and they also tend to be the worst. Come on. Um, okay, so what if we were to look at this from the opposite direction? So, um, you know, may, maybe this is less less interesting because like maybe there are so many top 20, but what we could do is we can kind of uh, take a look at these backwards. So, you know, some of these um, some of these refiners may, may, may have stopped working or maybe, um, but, um, you know, what's interesting about California comes out is that we run 12 refineries in California. And, but for some reason, we d haven't produced um, any refineries that are in the top 20 worst in, in, in the country. Um, but then when you look at the California refineries, who is at the worst um, of those? And you know, according to our rankings, we say Valero Benicia has the worst one. Um, and then as we get, oh, actually, no, sorry, this, this ranking is, is um, they're, they're not sorted uh, in, in these, in, sorry. So we just kind of have to eyeball a tiny bit. So apparently Tesoro Los Angeles um, was the best. And then kind of eyeballing this again. Um, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I keep getting the, the, the rankings are backwards. So um, the higher the higher the number, the worse they are. So again, Tesoro Los Angeles Refinery was the worst. <laughs> and it tur turns out Philip 66 is, I want to, I, I can't say the best. <laughs> they rank the low, the, they, they rank the, the lowest uh, of, of, of our, uh, of our so, so yeah, yeah, so that kind of gives you a sense of um, kind of the distribution of, of uh, refiners. So, so this is our, our ranking space. Least, um, yeah, uh, yeah least, just yeah. make clear that the higher the number, actually, that means they had the least pollution. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So 116 yes. was the was the least polluting. Was the least polluting, exactly. Which turns out to be Philip 66, uh, <laughs> which is interesting. Like if I can. Okay, so um, here we're um, here we're uh, looking at um, uh, the the refiner ranking. So um, I can jump back to our presentation. Um, And, and we're going to now transition to the second portion of this uh, conversation, which is um, data analysis. So um, we kind of get a sense of you know best and worst, but we actually want to start to look into the data. What do we have? So um, data is available to download in CSV and JSON format. Um, and sorry if we're going to get a little bit technical jargon jargony um, here. Um, uh, I'm happy to kind of explain. Uh, CSV is comma separated value. This is really nice for importing into Excel or Google Sheet. Um, JSON is kind of more for you, you techies who like to program. JSON is really nice for, um, for getting data. So uh, CSV is what we're going to be using. We're going to then import it into Google Sheet, which is like an online tool for Excel. Uh, that's like an Excel thing. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, two-week monitoring data for benzene is available up to 2021 with nationwide. This is really good for just comparing uh, across uh, different refineries, like comparing apples to apples. Uh, the continuous monitoring data that's available currently is the Benicia Valero refinery um, from early 2022. That's um, when the data search became available um, to now. And so I think there's um, Constance and uh, Kathy can chat a little bit more about um, the data. Uh, let's say you don't want to um, do the analysis. Oh, sorry. Let's say you don't want to do the analysis yourself. Um, there are some really nice dashboards that um, other uh, other organizations have produced. Uh, there's the Environment Integrity Dashboard, 
which uh, also uses the same benzene data. And the EPA itself produces a dashboard to view this data. Um, and I think uh, Aaron will, will post in the, the chat those links. Alrighty, so time to do a demo. And this is the this is the part that will scare me the most because we're gonna go up. This is this is where I don't I don't have anything to help. We're gonna have to to wing it. Okay, so um, let's. So what is the first question I want to ask here? So um, actually, firstly, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to use a quick feature. I, I know I wanna take a look at all of these Bay Area refineries and I'm gonna hit this little bookmark icon. And if I want to get to these refineries very quickly, I'm gonna to go to my list and you'll notice all of, their, all of the, um, the refineries that I just bookmarked are here. So if you just need to, if you have like those refineries that you're really interested in and you wanna to get to quickly, um, you will just be able to bookmark them and, and, and see them here. Okay, so let's, um, so the question I want to start with is, I noticed that California um, refineries tend to be better than Texan ones. So let's just compare it what like a better refinery might look like to uh, the, the Texas ones. And sorry, if there are any Texans in the room, I think you need to talk to your legislators. So um, get available data. And again, this is the Valero Benicia site. Uh, we're going to choose the two-week measurements, and uh, I will slow down here. Uh, I'm going to choose the two-week measurements, and let's say I want to do my analysis for 2020. Um, and you know, we'll just go to uh, 2021. Uh, there's small here, but um, you can kind of see the the date range. Then I'm going to click download data CSV, and lo and behold, here's the data. And I can open this and I'll just press extract. So then I can just put it in my, my downloads. I can just replace whatever's there. Okay, so I downloaded those and those are in my downloads folder. And I wanted to go back and find the worst refinery, compare the Benicia refinery to the worst. So um, I went to the compare their compare this refinery button so then I can go and go back to this list quickly. Scroll back up. That's our number one refinery, number one worst refinery. <laughs> um, and do the same thing. Two weeks, two week measurements, um, 0101, 2021, 2020, oopsies, 2020, 0101, 2021. So same, same date range. Download CSV. Open it. Um, you get a zip. You get a zip file because there are multiple files in there. I press extract, and uh, now I'll just replace. Okay, replace. Okay. So I have um, the data for both of these uh, for the entire year. We're going to open up um, Google Sheets, and I'm going to actually show you a shortcut. If you type in sheets.new, like a URL. Uh, Sheets.new will actually open a uh, Google spreadsheet. <laughs> well, insider knowledge. Uh, okay, full disclosure, I do work for Google. <laughs> so I happen to know this trick. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna compare Valero Benicia to um, versus photo refinery. So we're gonna import the data. So um, what we do is we go and uh, click import. It's in file, import. Uh, I'll do that one more time. File, import. So um, again, I downloaded the CSV version because that's most compatible with Google Sheet. Browse, go to my downloads. And I think this is the one from 735. I mean, I'm gonna open up the benzene concentrations file folder. After, and then I'm gonna, after it finishes uploading, I'm going to click insert new sheet and everything else is standard. So I click import data. So now we have all the data um, for the year. I'm gonna do the same thing for a total refinery. File, import, upload, browse. Again, I'm just selecting um, total refinery, total refinery benzene concentration. Import the data. Oh, I don't actually, sorry. I have to click 
insert new sheets so it, it inserts it into this one. Otherwise, I think it just creates new ones, new ones um, in the background. So remember, yeah. Okay, but here we have a bunch of data. I don't actually know what's here. I don't actually know what the headers. So we included one more file for your for your um, for help called a, a data dictionary. So I'm going to import it. It's a CSV, so you can import it. So when you um, downloaded the data, you have two files. There's one called total refinery benzene concentrations. Then you have the data dictionary. So we're going to import that one. And then uh, again, I have to click the insert new sheet and then import data. OK, so then I'm going to move it here. So the data dictionary actually tells us what's contained in the data. It actually gives us a really nice overview. So it told us column A is a facility, and it's just the name of the facility, so Valero Benicia. Secondly, the state. So the second column is our state. Uh, the next one is the EPA region, which is kind of a more technical thing, but each, each you know, EPA kind of separates us into multiple regions, so you can do that. Um, sampler name and sampler type. Um, so um, what that means is uh, each, um, when, when they report the um, benzene concentrations, they tell us which like location, um, which is it's called a sampler uh, that, um, that produces the data um, and the latitude longitude. So these are actually the exact coordinates of that specific monitor. Um, and then the period start and end date. So the period start, the start date was um, here. It's saying um, this call, this row says it's uh, January 8th to January 22nd. So as you, as a, as a, as we uh, noted before, these are, these are re required by the EPA to, they just, and essentially they, they took the average across two weeks. So they're like a little bit more technical, but um, essentially they, they're reporting one value for a spread of two weeks. And the next column is the benzene concentration, um, the concentration in micrograms per meter cubed. And then finally, there's a yes or no, which tells us whether or not this, uh, the amount that was measured is below or above the detection limit. So this is just kind of um, a, uh, you know, for each, um, you know, uh, monitor, there's kind of a, a threshold for whether or not it can, you know, uh, report uh, a, a true value, or if it's kind of below a certain threshold that it might not be as accurate. I might not be explaining that exactly right, <laughs> but um, essentially you can kind of filter based on like, if, if we only want, if we only care about um, the ones that are above the detection limit, we can just quickly filter on that. Okay, so we have both Valero Benicia and Total Refinery. Uh, let's actually try to do some graphs or actually I'm, oh yeah, there's no, I'm trying to do no programming. Um, so we're kind of trying to keep this as simple as possible. Um, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is this is just make it easier to work with the data. Click this like little area right here to show all, to like highlight all the data. And I can click this button called create a filter. And what this magic button does is for each of these column headers, I can click on this little button that can let us sort very quickly. So I can very quickly see what was the, the highest concentration value measured in this year. It was 3.01. And it was measured um, in August to uh, the end of at the end of August. And um, you know, and, and we could we could just very quickly like uh, sort based on that. And then we can also maybe filter out. So let's say we don't care about um, values that are below the detection limit. So here I just very quickly filtered out all of the um, data which is um, below the detection limit. So that's really helpful. Um, I'm gonna go, go and remove this, those filters real quick. I made a mistake. <laughs> And and I'm, again, I'm gonna remove that the this uh, this sort. I'm just uh, actually the best thing is I just I'm gonna just undo a couple of times. Okay, so because uh, we want the the data um, in in the, in order. Okay, so let's just make a graph. So to start, uh, insert um, chart. 
and here a chart is created. And then we're going to select a X axis. So that's, um, we're just gonna maybe just try the period start. And the Y axis is gonna be the, the uh, benzene concentration. Oops, I need to click on the entire column. Okay. Ah, okay, great. So here we have a distribution of the concentrations. And you can clear there, there you can clear that you see there's uh, an, an kind of an anomalous time where the benzene concentrations were very high. Um, and this is reporting for August, uh, August 20th to September 2nd. So um so maybe we can ask the question, what well, what in the world was happening during this time? <laughs> Um, that unfortunately we'll, we'll have to defer to local local experts on. Let's do the same thing for total refinery. And um, so again, we're going to click this filter button. We're going to insert chart again. Cool. And it kind of just decided to give us a chart, which is not exactly correct. Um, so we're just gonna have to do this speed up just a tiny bit so so it'll be less okay so and of course the title and the and the chart um the title and the uh and and this thing is not necessarily correct we, we need, to, need to fix that so uh here here what's it's kind of interesting is when you start to compare these two two charts is that this chart peaks out at three but this chart peaks out at 35, 40, gets really high. 38 might be the max. And we can actually see what, what the max is. So clearly, you know, something, something was something better happened in California that said, hey, you know, benzene concentration got to go above three. And apparently they almost hit that. Actually, they, they probably got very close to hitting it before they're like, some they they fixed something or maybe they fudged the numbers, who knows? <laughs> Uh, but in Texas, they they go they go all out. They don't care at all about how high these benzene concentrations go. But let's say we wanted to compare them. What, let's just see which what these two look like next to each other. So very quickly, we're going to now create a combined chart of these two things. So chart, click here just just to start the the chart. We're going to pick an x axis. So um, again, we're going to choose uh, the period of start. Then um, the y-axis again, we're going to choose, um, this is for the, the Venetia um, data. Okay, so that's the chart we had before. Then we click this button called add series. So we get to stack charts on top of each other. Add series. Um, we're going to click this button, click this, total refinery, again, benzene concentration. Okay, this one. And what do we have here? Um, I don't even know if we can actually see the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the red lines are dwarfing the blue lines. And actually the, the red is kind of like red on top of the other. Maybe we can actually uh, flip these around. So let me just see if I can remove this one so we can get that one at the bottom. And let's go and, um, sorry, bear with me. Yeah, because we know, okay. So blue is showing us the total refinery. That's the one in Texas. And red is showing us um, the values coming from Valera Benicia. And now you can kind of get a sense of like why and how the Texan ones are just so, so terrible is because you know, in comparison, California and Texas, and, and I can't, again, there's not necessarily a representative sample of like, you know, Villa Urbanish doesn't necessarily represent all of California and Toto doesn't necessarily reflect all of Texas. But now you can clearly see how policy dictates um, what's allowed, what, where these, what these refineries are willing to do. And it turns out that maybe if you put some high regulations on refineries, they, they'll actually try to do something about it. Whereas maybe if you didn't, you know, I, again, I don't know the political situation in Texas, but I think they really got to do something about this. So anyway, so that's how you can start to analyze the data very, very briefly through Excel or Google Sheets. Um, and um, and I just want to be mindful of the time. 
um, what we can then do is start to do this similar thing, but with all of our, um, but with all of our um, barrier refineries. Let's just see where they stack right with each other. You know, how 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 are all these different things? And and maybe what we could do is we can try to determine like what times of the year um, refineries tend to produce the most benzene. Or you know we can try to do some comparative analysis between these different things. So again, we're comparing apples to apples since we're using the same EPA concentration data. Okay, so um, I want to now try to look at some of the continuous monitoring data brought to you by BCAM. So again, I'm going to jump right to Valero, Valero Benicia, and um, again, I, I wanted to show you what uh, the other uh, refinery looks. Uh, the other um, let's let's just take a look at um, Shell Martinez. Um, you'll notice what what changes between those. So um, you'll notice that we highlighted these are all of the chemicals that are being reported by Mar the Martinez refinery: benzene, ethyl benzene, sulfur dioxide, toluene, VOCs, and, and xylene. But to uh, and and you can actually click here to go to the live monitoring site for for Shell Martinez. Um, hopefully, it loads slow connection. But they didn't give us any API to download the data. <laughs> they, they reported it, but we have no way to get it. Maybe we do have a way to get it, but it's very hard for us to get it. So uh, unfortunately, we can't necessarily download the data for it. And um, you know, I really want to make sure that we can uh, get that data. So if there's any way uh, anyone knows how to get any, any of the data that, that is on the site, uh, we'd, love, we'd love to be able to, to get your uh, API access to your data. Um, okay, so going back to um, uh, Benicia. So here we actually do have access to data brought to you by the BCAMP um, team. Thank you again for working with us for getting the data available. So let's just pick a few. Um, uh, let's just pick a few that are interesting. Um, benzyl, ethyl benzene, uh, maybe uh, PM25. Uh, Constance told us told me that there was some flaring happening. And I actually want to know if that shows up in the data. So what I'm going to do is um, this data is continuous monitoring data. We Excuse get, me, course, Sufi, I think you have to show where the BCAMP monitoring station is oh, course, relative to Benicia, because that's not, we're not monitoring the refinery exclusively uh, by any means. So, okay. um, you know, it's really important to know uh, where it's located. Good point. Good point. Absolutely. Um, we do. Also, the... if you're going to look for flare data, you should look for sulfur oxides. Okay. We find more than. Thanks for the tip. Um, so sulfur dioxide will be on the list then too. <laughs> and this is incredible that we can very quickly get that. Um, okay. So we're going to um, pick, we're going to go right to today. Um, and the reason why actually I'm um, I think there's like a one one day delay in in the in the data um, before we can get access to it, um, and so I think we're gonna have to try to just get yesterday's data for now. We're gonna um, we're gonna focus. This is this is the site where we get some continuous data, so that's why I'm I'm, I'm choosing this this one strategically as well. So anyway, I chose um, January thirty first to uh, February first, and we're gonna download the data as CSV. Uh, and we're just going to see what we have. So again, I, I download the data and I click here. I'll click this extract button and uh, okay, hold on, I gotta hide this. Um, extract, um, extract. Cool. So here's the data and make a new one. Sheets.new. Oh, by the way, I, I'm, I'm going to shortcut. <laughs> um, because let's just assume that I downloaded and extracted all the data and I imported everything magic, <laughs> T television magic here. Um, and here we actually have benzene, ethyl benzene, PMT5, sulfur dioxide, uh, toluene, and, uh, and those data um, for um, our date range. Uh, they're uh, January 31st to, to, to February 2nd. Um, and we actually also produce a data dictionary. So. It tells us the data source, um, the sensor name, uh, the latitude and longitude. So um, really, really great for if you want to do map-based visualizations. 
uh, the time at which the the measurement occurred, uh, which pollutant was was um, measured, uh, a specific abbrevi abbreviation, uh, units of measure. Um, uh, so that's um, it tells us which which unit it's going to be in either parts per billion or micrograms per meters cubed, and then the measured value. So I think what's really nice is that we give you the units, so you don't have to ask. You know, it'll, it'll just be right there in the data. Uh, lastly, we actually have a status um, if the status is available, and it tells us uh, in a set of numbers like what uh, what the value if the value is like QA'd. Uh, sorry, if there was quality assurance on the data, if they you know if there's any specific things that you should know about, about the data, uh, we also report that. So um, as I mentioned, I imported it the same way I did. Um, and what then what I did was I actually put a filter on each pollutant. So here I filtered for all the benzene and I just I just duplicated it. Then I put a filter for ethyl benzene. I put a filter for sulfur dioxide. And then finally um, I said, now what does the graph look like? So I got this. And I'm sorry, I didn't finish uh, labeling all of these um, before, before we started, but I believe um, they're in order. So benzene is the first one. I'll just, I'll just fix it here while I'm, while I'm here. Uh, ethyl benzene is next. And then actually, actually uh, this was the sulfur dioxide. And sorry, just going to pop those in there. Um, and yeah, so um, we actually have some interesting graphs to look at, um, and we can kind of get a sense of where the values peaked. And uh, another kind of analysis you might want to do is figure out which pollutants are correlated with each other. So um, here we're saying that benzene and ethyl benzene, they might actually go up and down relatively close to each other, whereas maybe something like sulfur dioxide, um, which you'll see in red is kind of uh, hidden below, uh, maybe that value is a little bit more, you know, less, less, uh, you know, less correlated or something. Um, I, here, I'm just kind of, I, I didn't, I didn't really do a full statistic analysis of that, but um, you can kind of start to get a sense of um, when, when you start to graph these against each other, uh, what sort of, uh, what sort of insights you might be able to pull from them. Uh, but you might just want to know what was the largest value. Like you just want to know what is. Maybe you don't want to know the whole distribution. What was the, the highest value of ethyl benzene? It was 1.29. But uh, Sufi, do we really know where this is coming from? I mean, we don't have we pinpointed the source um, with mm. um, met data. I mean, you have to have right, meteorological right. data, right? Right, 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 right. Um, absolutely. So yeah, you can start to kind of correlate data. We don't have the weather station data. Uh, we we might get the weather station data. I think uh, that. Uh, we could potentially um, report because I can know BCAM has some meteor meteorological data available. Uh, right. I don't think we just made it necessarily fully available uh, on the site just yet. Um, but yeah, I think meteorological data starts to get really interesting. Well, uh, uh, yeah. well, why that's important is you cannot say this is necessarily related to the refinery. Yeah. Could be from the trains, the freeways, the ships, the, you know. Um, that, that's what's interesting about it is that you want to be able to use such data, um, hopefully, yeah. um, with MET data to uh, pinpoint where it might be coming from. So that's that is something that yeah. um, that kind of analysis takes time, and right. um, you know because you can't just you can't look at that and just say that's the yeah. refinery. Yeah, yeah, I, and I think. Um... You know what we're what we're trying to do is let's let's get you the data to actually do that kind of analysis. Um, you know, I definitely agree that yeah, the the sky's the limit for where these things can go, and they can become this really big, interesting project. And actually, we're going to segue into the next, uh, the next uh, next slide. So anyway, that was the data analysis portion. Um, but yes, um, what offer you know as like a next step? So you know, we can we can try to make this data available. Um, we can uh, provide additional trainings um, and try to you know, deep dive into a specific question that you're trying to um, look at. And we can kind of help you see if we, the site can help you um, get the data that you need. Um, we can also maybe support you with the data analysis. Um, you know, we can um, kind of think a little bit more about, uh, yeah, see if we can, you know, build, build, write a little script that can kind of help you um, see the data better or, you know, 
you know, try to try to get answered the specific questions that you might be looking for. Um, and we're also kind of a, a Bay Area network. So, um, you know, uh, we we in, we meet, um, the Airwatch Bay Area Working Group meets uh, at 10 a.m. on the first Thursday of the month. Um, we meet remotely on Zoom. And so, yeah, please join us. Um, we, we are um, always uh, interested in or, or, um, trying to understand what's going on in the Bay Area and see where like the data can meet the, um, the local knowledge that you have uh, and see if we can try to build some really interesting insights into how we can get the data to, to correlate with what you're, what, what you're observing. And um, if you want to join our group, uh, Constance and Kathy have, uh, are available to email. Just let them know you're interested. Uh, I put their email here, and I think believe Aaron will post in the chat um, the emails. Uh, yeah. And then um, I wanted to uh, give the spotlight back to Kathy um, about a BCAMP forum coming up. So BCAP will be having a forum on uh, February 16th at 7 p.m. in the Benicia Public Library. And as Marilyn mentioned, BCAMP is a community monitoring station. Uh, we're not specific to Valero. Uh, and uh, a lot of the monitoring here that they're doing with the uh, EPA be uh, benzene monitors, those are really specifically for the refineries. And that's mm -hmm. what most of the comparison involves, because in most places, that's the only thing they're monitoring. Uh, BCAMP, you know, we're located between the refinery and the port. Uh, in our workshop on the forum on the 16th, uh, one of the things we'll be talking about is how you can use monitoring to pinpoint sources of pollution. So we, you know, what Sufi is showing is, yeah, we're seeing that there's pollution in this air. And yep, there's a refinery right there. Of course, there's also other things around. But um, one of the ways you can use a monitoring station is it, when you have a MET tower, you can see which ways the wind is blowing when those particular pollutants are present. And we'll be talking about that kind of thing in more detail, about what the health impacts of air pollution uh, are, uh, why we monitor, and how uh, monitoring can help pinpoint locations. and. Uh, a little bit more about the regulatory thing. And Sufi, maybe at the very end when we talk about next steps, I'd like to speak just for a moment on that too. Of course, of course, um, because that is the next next thing, um, next slide is the two-way street. Um, how can you um, how can you help us? Uh, what, what can we do for each other? Um, firstly, um, we we appreciate that there is real-time data uh, that exists, that there are, but we also need a way to get to the data. We wanna be able to download the data. Um, we have a, a recommendation um, document, do, a document um, that Aaron has posted in the chat for us, um, who that um, kind of is a, a, an appeal um, about how we can kind of ask our regulators to um, be able to get the data, to be able to make the data open and available for us to then access it and do good analysis on it. Um, and yeah. Uh, we, as soon as that data is available, we'd, uh, we're, we'll be working hard to to make it downloadable um, so that it's accessible to uh, easily accessible to the public. Yeah, and and right now I, I just wanted to talk a second uh, for people who uh, there are, there are people here that aren't from the Bay Area. Um, the benzene monitoring system that's part of the EPA in the Bay Area in California we have air quality management districts and in the Bay Area, it's the Bay Area Air Quality Management District. And uh, we are starting to advocate that there be open, accessible data, raw data available to the public because the raw data, it's very important so that you know what you're getting, you, you know yeah. what they're relying upon. And right now, uh, the th one reason, uh, Sufi used BCAMP a lot and used it as an example is because we provide raw data to anybody who asks for it. And we have a, a, a data portal that's accessible to anybody who wants to use it. And that's not true of any of the refineries. Yep. And it's very difficult. Their data is old when you request it. Uh, mm -hmm. Marilyn tried to get some data. She had to do a freedom of information request. Mm -hmm. And all of those, this information, BCAMP has shown that it's possible to make this public 
to yep. make raw data publicly accessible. And we want to start pushing the Air Quality Management District to do that. They have also recently, there have been some new fence line monitors set up to measure uh, hydrogen sulfide. And uh, we want to, and they have come up with some pretty good criteria for it, although we want to push it to make it more publicly accessible. But we need to make sure they enforce the criteria that, that, that they have set up. Okay. So that's a, a couple, that's a couple things that are coming right up. <laughs> and then Sufi, you yeah. want to go back to that list. And if you're interested oh, in doing any of that stuff, uh, please contact me and, and Constance. Yeah, we even added a blurb about that right here. Oh, sorry, right underneath the, the data download. Hey, are you frustrated you can't get this data? Yeah, exactly. So we, we linked there too. Um, but yes, sorry, uh, and, go ahead. And I was just going to say part of the point of this site is to show the fact that yep. most of this data is not accessible to most people in the country. In fact, for most people in the country, there's no data at all. <laughs> data, we're going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. As much, much as we complain, <laughs> we could live in Texas, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I really hope that we can inspire other other people around around the country to really start to ask those questions. Like, they have this, why don't we have it? And and it, it goes for any any set of people. Um, and so yeah, it's 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 a really um, and I'm very passionate. I'm very appreciative that um, you are here activists here in this call that that are really working and helping are keeping our air accessible uh keeping our clean and, and making the data accessible so yeah i shout out to you for for working so hard that to to make this um to do the work that you do okay um oh, just to quickly oh. run this out oh. um so oh. um there's also the smell my city app um, it, it is a really cool app that helps you kind of just report what you're smelling in the air. And we can actually start to build a, a, a corpus of, of instances that are happening. Uh, and you can actually report um, a lot of really, really good data. Um, and it really helps us um, kind of understand what's going on. Um, and so, yeah, please take, take a look at this uh, Smell My City app. And then finally, um, how you can, you know, we just love to get your feedback. Um, we, we were building this website for you. So how can we make it better? And we also want to know how you're using it, um, if you are using it, because um, me possibly in the works is like a you know a fun page to kind of show off all the cool anal anal uh, analyses that that were produced from the data. Uh, and so yeah, we just want to be able to build a, a, a corpus of here here's like projects that use this data. Um, here's what you can do with this data, and kind of start to build the next part of the the, the pipeline of here you have the data, you know, build something interesting with it and make reports and and advocate with it. So yeah, um, that's those are kind of our our asks uh, for you. And uh, again, we really appreciate that you're here to 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 um, learn more. Um, okay, so Aaron, do you have some questions for? Oh, oh sure, sure. Uh, I think we're we finally made it. We finally made it to the end, and I really appreciate your patience. Uh, you can email uh, Gwen uh, at anger uh, at drexel.edu and me at sufi.abasi at gmail.com. Uh, thank you again. Uh, this is a Project Fair Tech Collective. Uh, it's a really cool org. Um, okay, I'm going to stop talking now. So, or let you, but yes, yeah, so your questions. Um, and again, thank you very much. <laughs>